book lovers welcome back to the Biblioteker channel my name is Jacqueline and as many of you know I am pretty much a young adult or new adult fantasy reader with the occasional historical fiction thrown in but I have decided that it is time for me to branch out into some other genres so over the last couple of months I have occasionally dabbled in reading some romance novels and sometimes I didn't like them, sometimes I did, but with the help of our amazing patrons, they have given me a list of their favorites. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go buy some romance books. I'm going to pick one. We're going to read it. We're going to see how it goes. And uh, I am super excited. So some of the romance novels that I have read already, the first one was In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. And I'm not going to lie, I didn't love it. Um, I thought it was cute, but it just didn't really do anything for me. Um, but I've heard really good things about Christina Lauren's other books, so I think I'm going to maybe get some of them. Um, and then I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert, and oh my gosh, I loved this book so much. So um, I have a thyroid disease, and actually the day that I read this book, I was getting tested to find out if I have a couple other diseases. Um, I have not gotten my blood work back for it yet, um, but this was such an encouraging and an empowering book for me um, that as I was kind of like processing a lot of my thoughts and emotions and how I felt reading this book and seeing that it wasn't a hindrance but something that actually made Chloe even stronger, um, it was exactly what I needed. So I loved, loved, loved this book. I have the next two and I'm really excited about reading those as well. Um, and then the last romance book I read. I actually don't have it with me because I lent it to Laurie Beth, one of the co-hosts of the Bibliovert podcast, and it was the Bromance Book Club. And you all, I loved it so much. It was so cute. It was so funny. Um, and I just like, it was great. It was exactly what I needed. It was a light, fun read. It was really cute, but it also talked about really real issues, um, but like dealt with it in kind of like a lighthearted, fun way. Um, so I lent that one to Laurie Beth, but I actually just went ahead and bought myself a new copy, but it's in the mail as well as the next two in the series as well. So some of the authors that I'm going to be looking for, and this is coming from the list that they gave me, uh, Christina Lauren's on there. Emily Henry, Sally Thorne, Sarah Morgenthaler, Casey McQuiston, Colleen Hoover, and Rosie Dannon. Don't worry, I will list all the books down below so that you can see the ones that they recommended as well as check them out. We've also decided that our May Patreon book buddy read is actually going to be a romance novel. So some of the ones from their TBRs, I'm going to go and try and find today uh, so that I can get the poll ready for them. So... I am armed with a list to go out and buy them. So let's go buy some books. Okay, I am back from Barnes & Noble. I didn't take very much footage because I was really, really concentrating. <laughs> I totally forgot. But I got some books. So not all of them are romance related. I may have picked up one or two outside of the genre. <laughs> I figured I'd do a little unhaul and uh, show you what I got. Like, what is self-control? Does anyone know where to find it? Let me know. 
So uh, starting with the romance novels, again, these were all ones that our Patreon girls recommended to us, and they are currently voting on the book that I will be reading for this video. Um, so I'll show you all the ones that I got, as well as a few of the ones that I already had. Um, and then it's we're currently doing a tiebreaker uh, between two books. So as soon as I know which one is the winner, then that'll be the one that I read. So starting off with romance novels that I bought today. The first one is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. Um, I mentioned earlier that I really like historical fiction um, and so I am really excited about this one. From what I can tell, um, it is about a girl named Annabelle who is a suffragette in England in 1879 and she has to kind of get the ear of someone in Parliament in order for the suffragettes movement uh, to gain more traction and to be successful and I'm assuming they fall in love. So this is one of them. Um, I'm excited about this because again, I do really like historical fiction. So this will be one that I think I enjoy a lot. The next one is The Tourist Attraction by Sarah Morgenthaler. This one looked really cute. <laughs> It kind of reminded me, it kind of gave me like a Lorelai and Luke from Gilmore Girls vibe, um, where basically he owns a coffee shop and he's like super gruff and grumpy. She's a tourist, I think it's in Alaska, and he's like, I'm, I'm never gonna have a fling with a tourist, and then she stumbles in his life and I'm assuming romance, you know, ensues. So I'm excited about this one because currently my husband and I are watching Gilmore Girls. No, I love it. He loves it. We're really, really invested. Um, so yeah, pumped about this one. Moving on, we have The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. Um, multiple Alaska books, apparently, um, but like, I'm not mad about it. I've been to Alaska, thought it was really pretty. Um, I did not meet someone and fall in love there, but I mean, I wanted to. I was 13. Um, but yes, I believe this is one about a girl who does not have a good relationship with her dad, doesn't know him at all, and uh, he gets sick, so she goes to stay with him to get to know him better, and uh, meets a man. So, I have heard really, really good things about this one. Um, several of our Patreon girls have read it and absolutely loved it, so, again... It's completely out of my like wheelhouse of genres, um, but like the descriptions are so cute that you're kind of like, wait, this sounds fun. Like what a little feel good. It's like a Hallmark movie. Like how can you not love it? So yeah. Okay. Now we have The Boyfriend Project by Farrah Rashawn and y'all. This description killed me <laughs> because I can't imagine. <laughs> A live tweet went out about a date that she was on and oh my gosh like I I, I hurt for this book character um, because I would want to die um, and so she takes six months to invest in herself and to love herself more and of course meets a hunky man at work um, I love that it's kind of like tech related. She wants to make an app. One of the things that I've noticed about a lot of these books is like these are really strong, capable, independent women. Um, and then they like meet them. I'm like, yes, I love that. I thought it was cute. And I'm like, again, I think I say this for every single book I buy. I'm excited to read it. <laughs> I, I think if I do get in like a little romance kick, I might like just breeze through a bunch of them and this is definitely one that's kind of at the top of my list. Okay, so this is one of the ones that's kind of causing a little drama right now. Um, this is one of the ones that is in the tiebreaker, the battle of wills, if you will. The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. Um, and like, correct me if I'm wrong, but is this now a TV show? Um, doesn't it have like Lucy Hale in it? I think I saw, again, our Patreon girls were talking about it in the, our Discord yesterday and I sent like a, a screen grab of it. I don't know if it's gonna be a movie or a TV show. I don't know if it's already out, but um, I kind of love the premise of this. There are two executive admins that work for co-CEOs and she's like super bubbly and happy and he's like, 
more uptight and stern and serious um and they're just like super petty <laughs> towards each other um and part of my job is being an executive admin so i think that's really really funny um and something that is like kind of interesting to me um and again since it's a tv show like if it does win like i think it could be really cute like to watch it when it comes out or if it has already come out i don't know um but yeah so this is one of the ones that's currently in the tiebreaker we'll see which one wins um now these are books they're not romance books but i did buy them today um this is one that i've seen all over tiktok um a winner's promise by christelle davos um again tiktok made me do it i really don't know a whole lot about it um the, the back blurb is really small. I think it's kind of like an arranged marriage situation. Um, but I hear there's a lot of really intricate world building. Um, and that's something that I'm, ex I'm interested in. So plus like that's a really cool castle concept. Like if it's floating in the sky, I think that's really cool. So the cover has definitely um, piqued my interest as well. So got this one. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Um, as many of you know, um, I love leather bound books and cannot control myself around them. Uh, and Barnes and Noble, they were selling these for $10. So I was like, okay. Um, but one of them is A Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. And it's really pretty. I need to take the plastic wrap off of it. Um, and then the other one is King Arthur and His Knights um, by Howard Pyle. Um, and again, it's just like really pretty. So I'll add it somewhere up there on the top part of my shelf but um yeah I just I'm a sucker for these if I see them I get them it's bad it's it's out of control but uh yeah I got those two um as well and then these are some of the romance novels that I currently had in my collection um I have not read them yet obviously um they were a part of the poll that was happening on our discord over in our patreon group um and so We'll go over these as well. The first one is the Duke and I by Julia Quinn. This is the first one in the Bridgerton series. Um, Laurie Beth, again, one of my co-hosts over on the Biblia Ever podcast, read like all of these in one week and absolutely loved them. Um, I have seen the TV show and I've heard that if you've seen the TV show, you can just go ahead and skip book one. However, I think I will read it anyway. I really enjoy the show. I, again, I like historical fiction. Um, so this is kind of right up my alley, I think. Um, the next one is Rosie's Traveling Tea Shop by Rebecca Raisin, and this was actually a recommendation of from one of our patrons several weeks ago, actually I think a couple of months ago, um, and it just sounds really, really cute. I think I've mentioned this on one of our YouTube videos before. It's about a girl named Rosie who is a Michelin star chef, and her husband cheats on her and leaves, and so she kind of like rents a little van and travels the country and does food stuff so, and I just think that sounds really adorable uh, so this one was also on the list and uh, it's one that I've been wanting to get around to so this one was a recommendation from my local indie bookstore back in Houston at Blue Willow Bookshop um, the ladies who own it and work there are hilarious um and they would not let me leave until i bought this book um but it's the switch by beth o'leary and um again i haven't gotten around to reading it yet but it sounds really really cute it's about this um older woman who uh, is really isolated and lonely and then her granddaughter who is dealing with the death of her sister um and the granddaughter has you know she's really super busy at work and like has a very active social life um and with the death of her sister um kind of has a, a mental break um and so the grandmother recommends that they switch so the granddaughter goes to a much slower pace um, and then the grandmother jumps into her granddaughter's very busy very very busy social schedule um, and it ends up being like a really good switch for both of them um, and so it sounds just super precious and again it was a recommendation from women that I absolutely loved at my local indie bookstore that I miss a lot and then the last one, which I think Liz might um, 
come back down to Nashville and force me to read if I don't read it within the next like three days. And it's The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. And um, this is also one that is currently in the tiebreaker right now. Um, so we'll see what is going to win. So this book is about a woman named Stella who has Asperger's and because of how busy her job is, she has realized that she does not have a lot of experience in the dating realm. So she hires a male escort named Michael Fenn to help her out in some situations <laughs> um, to become more experienced. Experience. And so uh, she has a list of things and uh, he helps her accomplish them. So this sounds super cute. I love the representation that's there. I love um, that we're talking about Asperger's as well as Michael's representation as a Vietnamese Swedish man. Um, so this is one that I've had my eye on for a while as well as I've been promising Liz that I'll get around to reading it. Um, so we'll see if the hating game or the kiss question is going to win so it's still pretty neck and neck but winning by two votes the kiss quotient I'm so excited um it it just sounds really cute and it sounds really fun and again like I mentioned earlier I love the representation that it has that was one of my favorite parts about get a life Chloe Brown um so I just can't wait I think this one's going to be a fun read and uh yeah let's go ahead and get started so I'm gonna get comfy light some candles, get some tea, and we're gonna start reading. Okay, so I just got to chapter 10 of The Kiss Quotient. <laughs> ah, it went from zero to a hundred <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> um, I'm really, really enjoying it. I have thoroughly enjoyed being in both of these characters' heads, seeing the complexity of them, seeing how they both have their own hurdles in life that they need to jump over, um, learning about Michael's family and kind of what's holding him back, as well as a lot of like the burdens that he carries on his shoulders. Um, and then Stella, like she's just, she's such a great character. She's so thoughtful and intentional. And she's trying really, really hard. Um, and I appreciate him. Michael is very gentle and thoughtful and slow with her. Um, and so this has been such a pleasant surprise of how much I've enjoyed both of these characters and getting to kind of be in their heads. Um, 
I don't know what I was expecting in terms of like the spice because <laughs> I mean like it is a romance book um but it wasn't this <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep reading and uh, keep enjoying it because it's really, really cute. So I just got to chapter 20 and I'm a little over halfway, um, probably two thirds of the way through. And I really, really like it. It's really sweet. So usually lack of communication is like my least favorite trope in the world. Um, however, I feel like these are very real issues, very real insecurities, very real fears that are hard to talk about. Um, and so it feels very real to read. Um, and so it doesn't bother me at all uh, that they have any issues like communicating some of the things that they feel deeply. So I flipped to the back to read a little bit more about the author and I hadn't realized that Helen Huang, who has written this book, had been diagnosed with the autism spectrum disorder. Um, and so I really appreciate that this is written in own voice, um, as well as I feel like I'm getting to understand Stella better, I'm getting to understand the author better, as well as learning what it is like to live um, with autism spectrum disorder. And so um, I just appreciate it that much more. And it's it's made this read that much more special. Um, but again, I am really liking this. Yeah, this has been a really sweet and surprising read so far. So I just finished and y'all, I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, again, I think one of my favorite parts about it, um, at the very end, the author Helen writes an author's note explaining her diagnosis and how it was later on in life. It wasn't even until she had a daughter of her own. Um, and just the way that she explained that so much of Stella and writing her story was very liberating for her um, to get to process through how she feels as well as some of her own mannerisms that she expressed through Stella. It was just amazing to read. Um, I loved that at the end Stella really learned to love herself um, and accept herself for who she is and didn't want to change herself and I just think it is so empowering and so encouraging um, and I really really loved this book. Um, I'm giving it 4.5 stars. I think the only thing that I felt like was kind of missing towards the end was a little bit more of like this humor side of things. I thought it was really funny and cute and, and quick and witty at the beginning. Um, however, I did miss a little bit of that towards like the middle and end. Um, however, I really liked Stella and Michael's story. Um, so I highly recommend this book, if you're looking for a romance, it definitely has it. It's definitely spicy, uh, so if that is not your thing, you might want to keep that in mind with this book. Um, however, I, I really, really liked it and am very pleasantly surprised. So I'm going to go ahead and journal everything, my thoughts, and keep track of it in my bujo. So let's go ahead and get right on into that.
that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining me as I started my journey into the romance waters. Um, please leave your favorite romance novels down below because um, I'm definitely interested in expanding more of my knowledge of this genre. So leave your favorites below, but I hope you have a fantastic week. Happy reading and I'll see you next time. But Bless you.